Hello everybody, I am the oldest man in the game, my name is Old Man RJ, and you are listening to another episode of Russeltude. And with me is no other than the oldest outlaw in history, he is the great, 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 great uh, nephew or whatever the hell he is, to Billy the Kid, (laughs) he is Tony the Kid. Say hello, you. Yeah, well, what's up everybody? Don't forget, I am the current outlaw champion oh, shit, okay that's right the yeah. new the, the first first ever. new new first ever outlaw champion that's and right where did that happen again huh where oh that that reject fucking mania, reject Sorry, mania I gotta see, I gotta it's good it's good you can cuss on the show man it was fucking awesome it's russell too russell too has f words <laughs> little rock says fuck up now you know <laughs> for real that boy with him with his character recently. yeah dude i love the rock's new character he uh especially at wrestlemania that shit was crazy to watch him like, he's dressed like Elvis some way, somehow, you know? Yeah. He has that, like, Elvis look. Facts. And it, and it gives that, like, he has that, like, the clothing fits that final boss of one of those, like, crazy-ass video games that you play. Correct the mundo. Yes. And that's the good thing about it. But... It, it, it really well, mm-hmm. I think of all, of all Ray Jack Mania, I think that a lot of people were very um, kind of question mark as to what was he really going to bring to the table. Was he just going to be another Hollywood or, you know, just a general Hollywood superstar now? coming to WWE and kind of stepping in the middle of what was happening already with Cody Rhodes' story and all this kind of stuff. And did he should he have taken that spot? And, man, The Rock just, I don't know what got over him, but he turned back time and <laughs> literally did did justice to this character. It was really freaking awesome to like, just watch while he's been watch there. watch him perform again. Facts. It felt like you were watching a young Rock back in the old days doing those wrestling matches, but... Of course, him being an actor now, he knows how to more make it more dramatization into the match. Correct. Like when he got speared, he's just like, oh, oh we my. saw that little like everybody turned that into a meme. That is like a big meme going on right now, and that was freaking awesome. And the really what shocked me of all things too was just, I think what we talked about it during Reject Mania was was what type of fighting or wrestling style he was going to do. Was it what we've seen before with The Rock, or was he going to change it up now that he knows he's a little bit more bulky? You know, his mo- mobility is not as what he used to be when he was younger. But at least he did his best to kind of, all right, audible. I'm not going to be able to do this, this, or this. So I'm going to be a little more of a bruiser type of thing. And made it entertaining, which he did. He yeah. made it, he made the final boss type of fighting style in the sense of being more brute. I'm going to kick your ass everywhere around this ring. And yet elements of what he used to do back in the day was even better. Because if I'm not mistaken, excuse me, if I'm not mistaken... He didn't do the, you know, from the back flip up no, this match, didn't, right? He did the DDT thing. So it's like, you know, some of those things he, he remember it, it required a lot of agility from what he was younger. And now I think that's where he got hurt and and uh, with this match with John Cena. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, I can't do this no longer. Right. So I'm going to change up my fighting style just a little bit. Just to, That's the one thing I want to point out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you look at it's funny it's not even in my script but right, we're no, talking right. about the rock <laughs> we just got into uh, it we just it was got awesome. into it because it, it, it the stole rock. the show a little yeah, bit kind of it was really one big piece uh, I'm stretch realized he did it over <clears throat> so much yeah like back in the day Correct. when you hit the stunner on him you'll be doing like 15 different backflips oh, and then on God. the floor yep here he took the spear like regular he just he acted like it hurt him a exactly. lot more exactly like, I think it was more now he did more dramatization to everything that happened like Correct. He wasn't selling in the old ways that he did, but he still knew how to sell correctly. Exactly. And I think that was a big spot in the match itself. People were wondering, like, oh, my God, were we, you know, I think during the show, when we are during Regent Mania, we were sitting there thinking to ourselves, like, oh, is he going to turn on Roman at that time? Like, yeah. is he going to do something like that? Or is it just, oh, my God, it was just a spot type of thing. Like, it was just part of the match. And it's it, it that type of stuff draws you in. As a, a, a like a, like a watcher who's watching the show and just in, in being entertained by it, and for that too being a first timer, if you don't know wrestling and this was basically your first WrestleMania that you've watched, in, in our case the Reject Mania, then this was entertaining all across the board from the beginning to the end, and it's just the main event of night one is yeah. one of those things where you can't still remember and replay certain parts of it, like exactly. the double pedigree. Correct. The first people double attempt where Cody Rose got up and caught him with the fucking cut. Right. Um, the Cody cut or whatever it was yes. called. So it's like it catches you where you start remembering certain aspects of that whole entire pay-per-view from mm-hmm. night one and night two. Yeah. And that's hard to remember when you, like, 
How much can you remember from WrestleMania 39 the year before? <laughs> All you remember is being disappointed at that. And exactly. You remember the Cody match with Roman. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, great match. But then, bam, he lost. That yeah. was a big thing. And that's why, like, now we're like, damn, man, this is... We're finally back to where everybody all around the world is excited and talking about it. Big time. And I, it, I think what I really, of all things, wanted to wait to see, what I like to see is people's reaction, especially after like a, a you know, WrestleMania or some event like this. You know, give it a day, go to social media, look at what the post w- was like on a Monday and stuff like that or for the coming weeks and see what their ideas or their opinions are to what happened with the show. It, does it kind of, you know, it hit the same way we feel or, or think in that sense or was there something that we missed and we're like oh my god it just reminded me that yeah even that happened like it's a two nights type of show and a lot of things happened during those two nights but it was such entertaining well, to watch one thing that happened on night one that's right boring ass crowd uh, that is facts and if we said it before that if no lie the factor was the cold because mm-hmm. it really affected everybody. We all know Mr. Joe Mattis was like, oh, I don't know if I don't think it really should bother. It should be different or whatever case it be. But you could tell from night one, like night it, two. you could hear crickets. Night two, bro, the freaking crowd was lit up. And that 10 degrees difference made a difference. It was Completely crazy. Because now everybody's back at it again. They're now yes. awake. They're like, now we can cheer because we're not going. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like their muscle, like obviously if it's cold and freezing and stuff, there's a little delay in people's reactions. So you kind of, you know, you make sense. But I mean, even at that too, though, it was like the beginning of uh, night one was actually not that bad in my opinion. Oh, no, really against Becky? Well. I love their entrances. Especially the tag um, team. Yeah, the no, tag team. Very oh, shocked. The six-man tag yes. team ladder match. Yep. Our truth Oh, my God. <laughs> Stole the show. Did Stole you know the show. That, okay, I was complaining about Oscar losing a lot, right? Yeah. Did you know this is the 11th time and finally he finally gets one win yes. at 11 WrestleMania? Correct. They actually mentioned that when he grabbed the title himself and they're like, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Michael Cole that mentioned that. And I was like, oh, oh, dang. I'm, and that, and it's so crazy. Like, oh, my God, he's been with WWE that long. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, it probably hasn't been that long because before – he was with TNA a lot. I yeah, was a fan was. of his when he was in TNA. I was too. That's why I was hoping for him to come back because in mm-hmm. TNA, he was world championship caliber. He was yep. a high performer, you know? He was one of their top stars. Yeah. And it made sense to him now going to WWE and how much, you know, people, like he became a fan favorite. Like he's an entertainer as well. Yeah, and wrestling, much. he's he's yeah. very passionate about it. And you tell, he, like the way he knows how to bring the crowd into yep. it. The way he puts on matches, even to his age now, you know, mm-hmm. he's still out there doing whatever he can just to get the fans to have a great time. Yeah. Right? That's when you know a wrestler is not out just for the money. He's out there for the, the fun, you know, the, the love fun, of the, the business. The love of the business. Yeah, big time. The love of wrestling. The love. We, from what I keep hearing now is entertainment is gone. Yes, it is not exactly it. It's not about just entertaining. It's wrestling now. And I think what we felt... And, and like as far as like throughout the whole show, like you know, especially with WrestleMania last year in thirty nine, we knew night one who was in charge of that card. Yeah, we knew oh, who was in charge oh. of night two, and it's like you get to see what a two night card on a Paul Levesque, aka Triple Freaking H. Okay, I'm gonna add the freaking because yeah, he deserves that game. one. He's Come on, game. yeah, he's the game. So Triple Freaking H, man, what he could do with the talent that we have currently. And everybody stood out. It's like, yeah, there were some a little, you know, some matches that were, you know, a little quieter than the others. But even then, it was part of a story that, you know, it's still up to their choice inside that ring to create a story, make give us something. Yeah. You know, I, I gave you the stage. Uh-huh. Show Go it to and us. Do what you can do. And I'm gonna not limit you. Just do what you need to do to entertain the crowd out there. That's another thing. You really realize that there wasn't that much of a, there weren't that many short matches at all. No. I just, I think only the Rey Mysterio one was short, but even that one was, felt like a long, good story going on. It was part of a story. And at that too, like, you know, we started to think about like, I think, I think we discussed this during Reject Mania that was the whole Kelsey uh, appearance worth it. But in the sense, if you look to please the Philly crown and more will be a, a, a memorable, uh, a memorable moment. moment for the Phillies and stuff like that. You would say Phillyans. 
Um, you know, freaking Kelsey, who of all NFL players most loved in Philadelphia other than freaking Kelsey? Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Great podcast. He comes out with his brother. Um, of all people, I like his input the most. And that's probably because I'm the older brother mm -hmm. and I like the older brother terminology and stuff like that. Not bad. But the fact that even even when he lost, when, when Philadelphia Eagles lost this year, he was still at the club putting on the Ray Mysterio mask. And who talked about the most was him just having fun and enjoying. And enjoying a good time. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to point out that <clears throat> uh, I forget I was going to point out to you. <laughs> it was great. It was uh, great. Yeah, yeah. So let's, uh, today's episode, by the way. Yeah, let's get into today's it. Today's episode yeah. is called uh, The American Nightmare. <laughs> Uh, in Russell City, if you haven't realized, the episode is called what our main event of the show is called. We always yeah. have a main event card. So mm -hmm. each topic is a quick, you know, it's kind of like a match. Right. Each topic is a small topic. We could go up and on depending on what we're doing. Yeah, this time we um, did, man. We were yeah. 10 minutes talking about We're not even media. talking about what topic we're on. We just <laughs> jumped in. Those are great. It's just great. We're like, it's because we're hyped. Oh, my God. For... We could, like, go on for hours on this one because oh how God. many people, like, how many people sat there and watched and remembered such things like yeah. um, the ladder match? Yes. The, any of it. How everyone was thinking it's going to, oh, two belts are on the line. Okay, cool. Correct. Uh, it's finally the separation that we've all wanted. Like belt. We've been asking for this for the longest. Like, bro, the talent's there. Get, get Separate yeah. the title belts for because each show. now we have a champion on Raw. Now yes. we have a champion on SmackDown. Correct. Um, <clears throat> we have, uh, what's it called? The women's title match Correct. between um, Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley. That was uh, one of those where you couldn't tell who's going to win. A lot of people were already thinking it's yeah. Becky's time to win the belt again. And you would you would not be too mad about it either. Like you know, I may not um, I may not agree that she. Did, my opinion. This is just my particular opinion. I don't think she did enough this past year to kind of gain the crowd back about being you know, the man again, like oh. the whole, that gimmick of what she did prior to her, you know, with her pregnancy and stuff like that, she was writing, you know, th that entertainment streak for the longest. She was like a really, she was a big hit at that time. And then when she came back, it's like, she kind of had to gain momentum again. It took a minute mm -hmm. for her to do it. And I think it was still, <clears throat> to my opinion, just watching the product and watching like even what fans are talking about, it really I don't feel like the fans really gravitated towards her like they did Rhea Ripley. Yeah, no. You know, and for her being an anti hero or heel in a sense, it's like she still stole a lot of the crowd at this point. And with the story, you could still feel like fans are still like gravitated towards Rhea Ripley. Yeah, pretty much. They're and, still into uh, they're still part of her fandom. Like it's still yeah. like this is now her show. Correct. And I think that's what's happening is very Ripley after WrestleMania 36 where she lost to Charlotte Flair. Yeah. Uh, she became a favorite. And then when she became mm -hmm. the mommy character. Correct. Everyone jumped on. Yeah. And I, I think what really helped was, I'm not going to lie, I, I know it's a little part of the, part of the, you know, entertainment part of things where, you know, Rhea had to mention something about her being, uh, you know, Becky being a parent and all this kind of stuff. And that whole little, little skit uh, that they were kind of go back and forth as, you know, maybe not mothers are uh, appreciative as to what Rhea Ripley is doing on the wrestling mat or even at that behind the crowds and stuff. It, it's it brought attention like, oh, my God, this is actually it could be a real fight between these guys. They may actually not um, mind if you eye to eye yeah, like that. Like the way they're talking to each other. Yeah, brought drama it, to um, it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If you look at the camera view and everything, mm -hmm. it looks so cinematic. But it's it was so helpful. I think the way they're changing this whole camera view part, mm -hmm. it really helps. And I think I think the greatest the great part about it is that The Rock and Triple H working together in a sense of what they want this company to be like. Who like the, these two guys at that two, you know, if it wasn't for e like each other at the time, like they had to count on each other to become famous in a sense within the company. Because at that moment, at their peakest, literally Stone Cold walked out, mm -hmm. you know, and he was the big money train coming in at that time. And you needed someone to jump over. Exactly. Like you needed a over. new good guy. You needed a good heel back and forth with each other. So these two like respected the most and i think it, the respect part came in from what they did inside the ring from night and in night out it's a sad thing that you know even though they did face the wrestlemania correct. 16 yeah we never got them to go one-on-one -on -one at mania that's correct and i feel like if you if you had gave them that moment 
even at like mid card or co main event or something like that. Man, I think that would have been a great, great match. match. Yes, very great um, match. But speaking about matches, think yes. about WrestleMania. That's uh, right. Mania and Arcade. All right, 50 minutes in, man. We got to get into the Let's go give our thoughts. <laughs> we just gave our thoughts about the pay per view so yes. far, or a little bit of it. But now let's do a little thing that we I like to do that, you know, came from the 2 and 6 show. Yeah. Uh, from Tom and whoever his partner's name is. Yeah, the unknown um, guy. Yeah, the unknown guy. Like, I, I can't remember his name. He's, I found out thinking he commented. I don't even know yeah. who it was. I still ask, like, who's this guy? I thought it was our cousin at the moment. <laughs> I thought it was my nephew, Alex. I'm like, oh, hey, I think his name is Alex, too, or something. I believe I so. Yeah, see he, about that. Tom, Tom keeps secret David by his partner's name. For real, he man. He changes it like the Joker changes his nickname. All the time. <laughs> That's so His <true>. stories. <laughs> you know, I got my partner. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so okay let's do best and worst yeah we're gonna do the best first and then we'll jump down to worst and then we're gonna have more best afterwards cool so first off your best entrance you can pick more than one you can talk about like you know what entrances you feel between both nights that stood out to you the most gotcha um best ent- entrance we're starting off with you said mm-hmm. um really the best entrance man to be honest i think it ha- like it go back and forth but bro I really like The Rock's entrance, what he did in night one, was literally oh, the best one, damn, to be that honest. That is the best one. The whole electrifying on the east end, the little, you know, the freaking Brahma Bull logo the on fire. fire. Oh, oh, my damn, God. The slow, was... the cinematic walkout type of to thing. Oh, my God. It was, I think that right I... there was fire. My opinion, by far the best. In my one. mind, they messed up because they should have had Roman go out first before him. Yeah. Because Rock had a bigger entrance there. Yeah. So they should have saved the rock for after Roman. I, I agree. I think, but I do also too. He kind of like out of him. It was like, no, I, I don't. I'm not an actual champion, so I'm not going to be the last one. I'm to not come the up. like. I'm not the main event. Exactly. Either. We're here because so. you know you're the champion. Out of respect, you're going to come out last and be the head of the table. Of course, you know that type of like theme part to it. So I feel like this is, you know, he did say that he's, you know, he has to go away for a little while, and I do feel. That he is going to come back and kind of come at Roman for this and say, hey, I gave you a spot. And yet, this is what happened. We lost. I gave you so much. Exactly. And you still ended up losing. Like, On your own. Like, you even did Bloodline Rules and you lost with oh, the Bloodline like, Rules. Exactly. So, so it's going to feed into it. Build in. mm-hmm. Big time. Um, another entrance I liked one was uh, Drew McIntyre's. Where they have all the Scottish people out oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. The you're bagpipes. Right. Yeah. They had, like, um, it's actually a song in Scotland. But uh, Roddy Piper used to come out to that theme song. Okay, thank you. That's what I was actually going to ask yeah. you. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I'm listening they, to it as I'm on my way to, to the show and stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm telling my son, I'm like, that's Roddy Piper. What Are they doing a homage or what, what's going on here? Because I know that for sure. That's a song that he did. CM Punk was a big Piper fan. There you go. Okay. He, he, uh, he loved Piper, but he was also a bigger Macho Man fan. And, of yeah. course... Punk go. is a really big Bret Hart fan. Oh, that too, yes, big time. Real he loves Bret Hart. He always says it. Yep. So when that happened, I was just like, "Oh, cool!" And then he comes out with the, you know, the sword, the swords and is everything. It? Right. Actually, okay. he didn't hold his sword this time. I was actually saying, people with swords. They were holding the swords for him, and he was ah, just walking through. Gotcha. So that's that's another cool thing that I witnessed about that whole show. Yeah. Is his entrance was pretty nice. Um, yep. I love the Kabuki Warriors one. Okay. But not just them, but Bianca Belair and the Power Buff Girls, you know, their entrance. Yeah, that actually wasn't, uh, that was actually pretty good. I have to agree with you on that part. Like, that was actually a pretty good entrance in. Like, it, it, for them to start on the top and be, like, declined downward on the side of the ramp and then them two coming out, like, I was, I think we were very shocked that they came out all at once. Yeah. We were thinking that they're going to do separate entrance, and Jay was going to be the last one for an entrance. But no, I think respectively, did I'm glad they kind of did it this way. Even at this, all of them come together down the ramp, and then just having a badass look. To and them. they still did their theme for each one. Like yeah, Jay came out first, did her right. theme, and then Naomi, and then uh, the fact that she played that. homage to the new recent, the newest member of the Hall of Fame, Jay, the costume where she did that oh, line draw. Yeah, to. Uh, yeah, exactly. I thought that right there was actually, man. See, there you go. People give her flack, especially Jade. They give her flack being the the new girl inside the industry or being the hype in a sense, like oh, she's just all hype and she's just there for you know a paycheck. No, she's she respects the company. She respects mm-hmm. what you know those her peers that came before her, especially yeah. the recent Hall of Famer, um, newly added recent Hall of Famer, and it's like that's that's actually what's up. That's then, nice to see. Yeah, the 
stability as she did. With yes. Um, her entrance, her, like, even the match itself, the way she presented it to everybody. Oh, big time. You had to love what she brought to the table. Yep. Um, I love uh, the getup that they had on. Big time. Um, but I think Jade, she wasn't as green as people thought she would be. No. No, she's really she, not. She's actually, she, her spots are good. She's not as aggressive. She's not as, like, um, accident. Or even damaging. Oh, no, not at all. Like, it looks good. Like, she's not too rough with her moves. It's not like her being this big old brute coming from another company and just hurting people. Like, she's actually doing it correctly. Yeah. And it's, like, it's really nice to see. So now, uh, is that the only good entrance you like, The Rock? Um, really, to be honest, yes. I mean, I did like Cody Rhodes, you know, for night two. Him coming up, you know, like he did when he his first ma made a comeback from there with his wife and then taking off the skull, like his, you know, American Nightmare type of mask. That's actually really dope. And at that, too, the attire that he had coming down, different from night one, was even better. More like, golden. I, I love the Golden Eagles on the side. I like that. I, I was like, damn, that's a tire. That Which is why better. I'm really hoping that they bring back the, some type of style and revamp the WWE belt in that manner. I'm hoping, like, something that fits that... Uh, like, he creates his own belt, at least. Yeah, yeah. And him being, like, more of an American name-ish, like, Correct. Thing, probably, like, a reddish-blue yeah. um, background. Correct. That would be nice. It would be nice. And I feel like that's what they're going... They, I feel like they are looking into it. Yeah. I feel like they want to redesign the belt just a little bit with the new era coming in. Obviously, you know, this is... You know, it takes a lot of work into it. So, they, I feel like they just kind of want to see, you know, how us fans really take in him being champion and how maybe his first run does kind of go in a sense give him a yeah. first couple months with the events a pay-per-view or night in night out on the card and stuff just to see what you know where we are and at that point i think that's where triple h is probably going to end up saying all right i think he's time for a nice little belt, Bring you know, in a new he, belt down. exactly he we did well we made the right choice so far fans are it's not just a one night moment it's actually looking pretty good yeah. so be nice Worst entrance. Oh, man. Worst? Um, dang. I, I would have to... Oh, sheesh. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Worst entrance. Um, I really would have to give it to... And, you know, it's kind of bad, but Karrion Cross, man. Mm -hmm. And the team. I, it's I, just regular team plain. coming in. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it was plain, really, to be honest, at this point. And it really... Mm, it really... They had nothing going for them. Like, no. They just came out and we're here. Yeah, yeah. And even even the Street Profits were, I mean, not great either. So they probably stuck it second it to like it. like just a push off there. Yeah, just a tad bit. And that's why I was like, uh, I don't know, man. It didn't really, it really hit very well. No, not as it should have. Is she going to be uh, coming up now with the draft? He's been, I mean, I, this is why I said during the show, Reject Benny, we're like thinking, like, who's what's going to happen to him? But I said, I'm like, he just... He, we, we've we already known he had signed the contract for SmackDown that he's going there. You know, Joe's like, oh, you know, he, he's still there with the titles and stuff. And I'm like, hey, man, they're more likely going to lose it more likely yeah, soon. Gonna, and they did. Yep. Then they're going to go from there. So I don't know. Will they carry their tag team moving forward? Probably not at this point, just because of what how that kind of played out at that night, so I feel like he's going to come out and be a singles at this and point. And just start off, probably a build up to him having a partner in some story where Corbin which, could be part of it. Big time. And which tells me is that more than likely besides the Intercontinental title what they have, they're going to bring in another title. Another like, mid-card uh, title match. I hope he's not 24-7 again. I don't think so either. I really hope not either. I do believe that they need to bring out something like how we used to see where it was a European and then it was uh, an Intercontinental type yeah. of thing. So, or, or, oh, no, no, what am I talking about? We totally forgot. Bro, there's still the U.S. title. On the other, on SmackDown. Yeah. yeah. So, there you go. Yeah. They could be on That's either fine. brand. They could win one of those belts. Yeah. And just build himself up to a championship run. That's correct. He has championship potential. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And he's one of my, like, literally, we've been saying there for a while. Like, he's he gives you that freaking, what's it called, Rick Steiner look, but wrestles at that time. Like a freaking Scott Steiner did before when he did Big Papa Pump. Yeah, because and he has I that think, mouth like him. I think Scott Steiner had to wrestle like that because he got injured, and that's why he had to slow down his pace. It, he hurt it's his not like what happened with yeah. Stone Cold when he hurt his neck. Stone Cold couldn't do as much as he did Correct. back in the day. That's right. But 
they when they change their uh, styles, they still manage to put on a hell of a show. Yeah, and which is crazy because you don't give enough credit to Scott Steiner in that matter. No, like, not at all. I don't think he got enough credit that he should have. Like the big Papa Pump gimmick was really good just because of what he did. It was appeal. It was you know I'm big. I'm I show my muscles. Blah blah blah. You know it got it got people's attention and stuff. But man, the prior to you know like before his big Papa Pump stage. His wrestling style was friggin' second to none. Really, no. he was really handles on, especially with the Heart Foundation. When you re- when you can wrestle with a team like that and carry on with them, man. Well, I think they. Uh, I think if I'm right, either Scott or uh, or both of them have wrestling background, school yeah. background. Like yes, amateur. he does. That's yeah. correct. Yes, they do. So, and Bret Hart, of course, Bret Hart just being a technician, he could follow up with any type of pro wrestler. Yeah, amateur. Yeah. I think even Hart had. A little bit of amateur behind them. I'm not too sure. Hmm. But uh, speaking about attires, because I think I got a break on mine. <laughs> right, no, right. <laughs> uh, I loved um, Eos Guy. I ain't going to lie, her attire looked good on her. Nice. Um, but I loved Apollo Crew. Not Apollo Crews, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Xavier Woods. <laughs> I was about to say Apollo Creed, because. Yeah, Kobe uh, Keeks and Apollo. Yeah. And uh, what's and it called? Xavier, Xavier Woods? Woods. Yeah, because they came out as Creed and Rocky. Yeah, that's what, when I saw that, I was like, that's freaking cool. Yeah, I like that one. I liked uh, Cody Rhodes on night two. Yeah. Uh, the Rock. I liked his attire for night one and night two when he showed up. Okay. Um, who else? I can't think of anyone else. Uh, Ray had like a lackluster tire this year. He no, wasn't yeah. as it wasn't as good as last year's. No. Even last year was a little a little iffy. But then again, you realize oh he was paying homage to another wrestler, so it's like okay that's not bad. <laughs> this time this type of year was, you know. There was really no pizzazz like he normally does. Oh, There's no touch all. to it. Like, none. I can't even tell if he was trying to do an, a character, like a comic book character or not. Right. But uh, you never know. Uh, probably they'll show, like, if you look it up online, we'll find out what he was Exactly. Like. When you give people enough time to be looking at yeah. stuff, they, 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 they will. Something. Trust me. Yeah, big time. Um, another tire I liked was the three girls from Powerpuff Girls. Yeah. Uh, Jay looked amazing as a storm attire. Oh, my God. Uh, Naomi, I can't tell who Naomi was. I know she had to be an X-Men, though, because all three of them were X-Men, I believe. Um, and I forgot who Bianca represented. I even said it on the show, oh, she's this character from the X-Men. Yeah. They were all, like, X-Men characters. I just forgot who they were, or Marvel characters. Mm Mm-hmm. So it was pretty cool to see that. Those were my three favorite attires. Nice. Now, the worst attire, Seth Rollins. Oh, yes. <laughs> night one and God night two. Golly, we were like freaking going ham on him. It was cool we were to talking see him a back lot as, of shit. You know, it was cool to see him back in shield form, but yeah. regular like that stuff, whatever the heck he was wearing. The Seth like, Figueroa's in night one. Yeah, I, I mean, not going to lie, night two, he did actually really well. Yeah, I, I was with okay with his get, thing? Yeah, I was okay, okay. with that, that, little, that little thing. That one... It was. It actually made more sense compared to what he would be wearing. What he did uh, night one. Night one, where he had that weird brownish. Ah, again. man, God, that gold and blue, and that ah, didn't make no damn sense. Like that was off. I, I see what it, you're talking about there. I think he wore that because he knew he was gonna take a beating. Yeah, I can see that. I, I'm gonna that. put this because this is my beat up attire, and yeah. I'm wear this because I'm gonna lose. But right. uh, it's flashy, this, yeah, shiny, uh, flashy, shiny. Yeah, that was actually his first ever second main event, but the first one where he actually competes the whole way through. Car through, yeah. Because the first time he was actually just part of the Roman and Brock. Man. Yeah, that's true. I think I think my worst attire, no lie. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, old man, but the Rock's attire, the whole the Elvis gimmick thing, that was stupid. This is my opinion. It didn't make no sense. It looked weird. It like made the, no sense. Like, it was like had, like had he gave like you giving him the hockey talk type of costume, then I would have been like, oh okay, that makes sense. But yeah. that whole that that part there, I'm sorry, no. He should he should have came out with the vest that he was wearing as Hollywood The Rock. And oh, I get you like that billion dollar look. Yeah, give us something like that, and like you know, come out a little flashy like that. But uh, you know, it is what it is. I, it, again, it's, this wasn't no, my it's, not my preference. Not yeah, my preference. I was about to say nobody like everyone has their opinion. Everybody yeah. has their taste. Mine, yeah. I was cool with it because I'm a Elvis Franklin like he is. Dex, yeah. But I feel like, just like you, I think he could have done a little bit different with the vest. Yeah, and I think also, too, my other one, my other worst was, I'm, you know, don't give credit too much, but Bailey's. Bailey's I didn't like, uh, I didn't no, like that gimmick. Sure. It didn't make no uh, sense. Yeah, Plus, it didn't, like, I don't know, like, normally she, her gimmick, her attires are never that, like, impressive. Except for, like, some of them when she wears. Yeah. Some of them look good for her. Some of them fit her, like, 
her uh, her presence. Yeah. But I think this year, for her to have a match where she's going to win the belt, they should have given her more of uh, like a better attire, a better entrance too. To I be. I want to say I want to say that they could have had and maybe should have brought it back old school and let oh, her the go back. One. Oh yeah, like give her that. Give her the you know the fan friendly you know John Cena Hulk Hogan gimmick woman wrestler in a sense. Like get re- rewind the clock a little bit and give us homage to that and let the fans like it. Like it may not be what she's going to do for the rest of, of her life going forward. Yeah. But at least currently right now, this will be something that she could do currently for part of the gimmick and just for the WrestleMania itself and say, I'm bringing this back for one night and, and one night only. I think that's why we were both, we were, weren't that big of a fan of it yeah. because we were waiting for her to go back to that old look. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I think that might be the reason why we're like, it wasn't that big of a look. For yeah, us. don't get me wrong. Like what she had wasn't that bad either. But it's, I mean, it wasn't the greatest. It, no. it, it. I feel like it just needed some more attention. I feel like this was just kind of put together re- recently and last minute in the sense of like even at that, if it, it just feels she knew herself that she just wasn't ready to what she wanted to put out there, and, yeah. and maybe it didn't all come together. That's just me. Probably because it was just last minute type of thing. Probably. Yeah, could be. She had a haircut and changed her hairstyle and everything too. Yep. 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 Um, uh, I think that's all I can think of yep. for tires. Yep. All right. Now let's go with uh, match of the night, night one and night two. Which one's your favorite match of both nights? Oh man, match of the night. I it really has to be on um, both nights. It has yeah. to be the main event for both nights. Both nights. Okay. Both nights. Night Not one. Not main night event two. though. Huh? Not main event. Not sure. main event. Like uh, you, yeah, in the main event. Of course, I agree. Yeah. Both nights, main event, did outside. <laughs> but crazy. like, if you were to choose undercard match, yeah. what would be undercard match for one and two? Uh, I definitely would have to go for the tag team. That I think really, especially for night one, that was really a good one for the undercard. Uh, for night two, I really would have to say the. Um, uh, oh man, it's kind of hard for night two. Night two had the AJ versus Knight. Then you had the Logan Paul versus Orton versus KO. Then you Bailey had against the Sky. Bailey versus EO, Jade, uh, and those guys. And I, I guess I would say night two would have to be Rollins and um, McIntyre. Yeah, that was a big because good match. the match itself was decent and the cash in. Yeah, and the the cash in part just phew, icing on the cake. So yeah, for definitely. me, yeah, I agree. I think, uh, dude, this being on that before you go there, but man, that I never, I didn't realize how high freaking Drew McIntyre flew up in the air as Priest gave him that choke slam. Really? Like if you really see what he did, he freaking got hops. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, Drew's a little taller than Damian. And for him to literally lift him up that high to do a, like a slam choke slam type of thing in his move, that was actually very impressive. Sometimes I think uh, it's not just height, but when somebody has a pretty good wingspan, yeah, I think Damian Priest has a pretty good long arm. Okay, for it, yeah. But yeah, I did I forgot that Drew actually jumped that high. I, I don't think I was paying attention when that happened. All I knew is I saw because I saw the cash in, and yeah. then I just I went to go get beer. I think, yeah. So I might have missed how it happened when he won. I was just like, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. He's cashing in. Da, 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 da. Yeah, and now I think I was just arriving at that time. Yeah. When and he then cashed. when he cashed in and then all of a sudden he wins it. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, and I, we watched the replay and I was like, well, damn. I'm like, I didn't realize he went up hang tie like that. I was like, that's pretty crazy. So that was very impressive. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, for night then two. this is the second time Puerto Rican becomes world champion. Uh, that's very true. I, I thought it was always, uh, so I always thought that Pedro Morales, the first one. Mm-hmm. Was Mexican, but no, he's Puerto Rican. And means that Eddie Guerrero was the first actual Mexican to win the belt. Yeah, Mexican American. No. And I didn't realize this too, but um, actually, it you know, Damian Priest said in the press conference that he literally wrestled. This was his first. He first got into the business and had his first actual wrestling matches just twenty minutes away from the stadium that they were wrestling at. Damn. So um, he's like, bro, he's like, that's just the crazy thing. Like, in a sense, this is where I started my career, and I get to actually win my first title, my world that's title. the place here, where, I, where I started all off. And you never know if cool. something, like, if Triple H started that. Like, exactly. So, we never knew and understood. I think we kind of saw what was coming when night one happened, and he lost our titles. We're like, oh, yeah, he's going to cash yeah. it in. And it's like, and it really, it makes sense, because Judgment Day has actually, you know, picked up the steam. They started off a little lackluster, especially with Edge. 
So you kind of, after he left, you kind of wonder what was going to happen, that they were just there, part of the card. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you give them the title belts, the little ones and stuff, and they made it. Man, they made it very impressive. And our truth coming in actually built up oh, the story for yes. them a lot more. Building up the fun, the entertainment part of things. I, like, I got the money for you. Exactly. Look. And I'm then sure. him coming out Monday Night Raw and then showing up the tag title. Like, yeah. we did it. Like, bro, all of that is is good TV watching. That is really good TV watching. So it, yeah. it's really nice. It's really cool. I, I agree. It, it's uh, it's just amazing to see how, how much it's progressed nowadays. Yeah. Um, but... Other than that, you know, those are my night one and night two. Night one being the tag team. Uh, night two, I would have to go with uh, Logan Paul and Randy Orton. Yeah. And uh, Kevin Owens. Yeah. I was very entertained during that match. Okay. Oh, no, no. Take that back. It was Guy versus Bailey. Actually, I love their chemistry with each other. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be my night two favorite match of, uh, of that card, uh, of the mid card. Okay. Uh, worst match. Yeah. Uh, the one, Ray against Dominic. That's my worst, any worst match of, uh, I think that was night one. Okay. Night two, um, I'm thinking for night two, it would have had to be uh, Bobby Lashley's match. I was Definitely. just impressed. Definitely. I feel like that was just too lackluster. I agree with you on that part. Yeah, it was just there. Mm -hmm. It was just there. Yeah, I agree with you. I was just like a throw in. For the first time, I can actually say a man's match was a battle match. <laughs> for real. <laughs> Finally, oh, yeah. you know, women are getting the respect they deserve, and uh, yes. men are putting out these matches. They're like, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to go get something to eat. Yeah, something. yeah. So I had one of those moments. Yeah, I agree with you there. I think uh, definitely the worst match had it been that one for me for night two. Well, even at that, I'm not surprised on this one, but literally, I think it, in my also in my eyes, too, the L.A. Knight and AJ Styles. Yeah, it was it was cluster. Yeah, it wasn't really... I, I wasn't a big I thought it was No, me. especially because, okay, what cost Emily Knight the championship at uh, the chamber was yeah. AJ Styles hitting with a chair. Yeah. Why not make it a no DQ match between both of them? Had Correct. them just cry, like clash all around, put on a fight. Yep. It would have made more sense. Or have them go into a, like, uh, I quit match or something. Like, give it a meaning, like probably a bull roll match or a chair shot match or something. In my mind, too, it's like, what, what's up with Luke Gallows and the other guy? I haven't seen him in a while. At, at, or, or Anderson or whatever his name is, right? The taller uh, one? Gallows is the tall one. The other one is Carl Anderson. Anderson. So it's like, you, yeah, where are those guys? I know they're part of, they're part of it. You haven't seen them so much. So at this point, really, to kind of spice it up a little bit and give LA Knight a bigger you know, pop for a victory would be is, oh, have them go in and just kind of you know, interfere here and there, hold, you know, hold the chair as he was trying to do it type of thing like that. Don't have it physically beat him up, but at least do something in that manner to give AJ the edge and everyone's like, oh, so close or whatever case and it be. And then, you know, LA Knight comes out and wins it. Yeah, exactly. So it's I like, think, yeah. yeah, it's like, it was very, it was very, um, it was entertaining, but not a big match for you to be like, oh, wow, you know, what a heck of a match. Because I think, I, ex I think expectation was, it's an AJ, it's AJ, and it's LA. And it's like, these guys can wrestle. LA, at this point, in my mind, has just kind of, his his heat has really been diminished a little bit. He's not really on after fire. After he lost to Roman Reigns. At the at Crown Jewel. Yeah. Like, after that, it's kind of diminished a tad bit. And because of the fact that after that moment, Cody Rhodes comes back, and all of a sudden, he's on freaking fire. And his story just keeps rising. Exactly. And Cody Rhodes' story wouldn't be as big as it was if it wasn't for The Rock. Yeah, I totally agree I feel with like you. The Rock is the one that made Gave that it. story build up more. Yeah, I think especially when they did the press conference. Because yeah. it's like we're all pissed off that, you know, he was going <laughs> to let him just walk like, walk over and take the take the main event. But, man, that press conference, I think, really changed the game. The way it ends. Oh, yes. Around with The Rock going, you know what? No, you're talking about my family. Oh, bam. Bam. Spibby, don't ever, don't ever talk to Black Adam family like that again. <laughs> Black Adam will shock your ass. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know what? Match ending. What is the best and worst match ending of the card? Ooh. Other than the main event, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're... Uh, best okay. So best ending other than the main card. Mm -hmm. Okay, best one, I think it has to be the tag team titles. Mm, okay. Drew, uh, with uh, yeah, our two climbing up and getting the belt finally. That too, I would have to go with that one. Mm -hmm. Um, worst one for sure. To be honest, man, I think has to be 
I think it has to be the the Jade the Night Two, the Jade, that trio one. Like oh, it, the way she just finished off the Kodakai and they yeah. all like did their move and everything. Yeah, I, I like. Yeah. I felt like it was just, just a simple squash match. It really was. It, that's yeah. what it felt like. So I and, feel like mm, you know could have done better. Could have had the ending end a little better. The entrance was nice, but the ending to that part because it just made the three girls that were facing uh, damage control it just made them look weak, and it's like. Okay, so here's a girl, a group of yeah. girls that have been in the team up in the system for a long time, facing girls who have never teamed up in their life. Facts. Just for these girls who never teamed up in their life, but are world champions in a way, right? right. Be able to, to destroy the other girls in no time. Yeah. Agreed. I'm like that was the dumbest part to me. I think they should have had a better match, better chemistry to the point where, at the end, Jade yeah. gets that lucky like yeah last minute finish. That's true. I think I think that at that point that kind of has to. It really just didn't, you know. We kind of knew. I think at that point at the table we kind of knew that, you know, Jay was going to get her victory at WrestleMania. It just would have been nice to kind of have it a little bit more impactful. It, it really impactful. Yeah, you could have had you know something, someone do almost a false count, and then all of a sudden Jay comes in and does her final move afterwards to kind of take over. You could have done something in that manner, but also again at that point it's more or less of what the wrestlers, you know, were working with in the ring, like how they kind of choreographed it with each other. And at that point, I don't think the execution was to what people expected it would have been, and it kind of just. Like Luster. That's yeah. all it was. Any Pretty Luster. much. Yeah. To me, another ending I didn't like was uh, the Rey Mysterio match. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. But De I feel yeah, like definitely. I, I feel like they could have done a lot better with Kelsey and the other guy coming in. Agreed. They could have been in the crowd and Dominic could have like done something to them to provoke them to come in. Correct. Because right here, you're making it look like Rey Mysterio was a bad guy. Yeah. And his team were the bad guys because Kelsey and them just jump in for no reason. I also think, though, too... I. Th if I'm just I really I'm really adamant about this. I do believe Dominic wasn't at his fullest either. Like he, I think he did really get hurt with Andrade at that one part. Yeah, because I think he got concussed, and I think he's like you know, hey, uh, it's not looking too good, and he was taking a lot of hits and stuff like that. He was doing the brunt, you know, getting the bulk of the beating a little bit, and it g goes right because we the fans want to see him get whooped. So it's like not bad, but it's also too like. You got to be careful. Like, yeah. if you've already hit his head in the back of the back, like, hit bounced off the freaking mat on the outside of the ring, like, you really can't do too much in, no. the, in there like that. And, yeah, that's true. So, probably that was a protocol of, hey, uh, you know, Dominic's hurt. Let's try to get him to the back right away. Right. And right now, currently, he didn't really wrestle at night one. No. Or, or wait, uh, did he wrestle? Yeah, he wrestled at night one. He didn't appear at night two, but night one, he was in the match. Yeah. No, I mean, um, uh, Monday night, bro. bro. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he did. He did, right? <laughs> he was in a six-man tag with uh, Cena, R-Truth, and true. Uh, Miz versus him and yeah. Finn Balor and the other guy. So maybe it's just a protocol. But, yeah, I feel like that had a really um, a play to it. And I think at that point, you could tell afterwards he really kind of took it easy. Mm -hmm. So he was doing a lot of, like, little bumps and stuff, but not too much craziness. So I think that kind of had a play into it, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I get that. I agree. Yeah. So now let's go down to uh, best main event. Oh, which best main event? Yeah. Is which that what we're right now? Like? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Match ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Attire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Main event. Which one was the better main event? To you, yeah. Between the two? Uh -huh. Shit. <laughs> That's tough, isn't it? Because both, I mean, man, both matches were pretty crazy. True, but I think at this point we definitely got to get. Oh, you know what? Let's do this better. Uh, in the last, uh, your top five main events, does this fall in with the top ah, five main events of gotcha. all WrestleMania history? Even better. Yeah. The, out of... Or, or does it land in top ten? Uh, well, I mean, definitely fucking top ten. Yeah. Within the top five... Both though, of them, though. Do both of them land in top ten or just one of them? Um, I really have to say one of them. I think, I think Night 2's main event really catapulted up, um, catapulted up to the top five. Okay. At this point, as far as top ten and stuff like that, too, I think night one definitely kind of falls well, in around me. Or even you top can, fifteen or top twenty? Yeah, you can argue depending on a good uh, how you stack it up. You can argue for a top ten, but definitely outside looking in, definitely within top fifteen, in yeah. my opinion. So it's more or less of just like man, it, it was really entertaining, and it's really hard. You know, I think Joe Madness kind of mentioned it too, and I bring it back to what he said during the show. It's really hard to for 
them to follow up after this? What, what What's the expectation for next year's WrestleMania? You know, you did a lot of, you know, appearances and stuff. How much more can you top that for and another night? The thing that made it really impactful for night one, yeah. uh, not night one, night two, is the fact that, okay, everyone had, um, what they call, like, a backup. Yeah. Um, Jay Uso, Jimmy Uso had Jay. That's right. Uh, so, Solo Sokoa had John. John Cena. That's correct. And The Rock had The Undertaker. That's correct. And when people think, like, why why The Undertaker? I was oh, thinking about God, it. Yeah. And really I crazy. thought the reason why Taker made sense, one, was WrestleMania 40. Yeah. Uh, Taker has been the biggest name in WrestleMania history. That's facts. Digging holes and taking souls, you know, for a long That's time. That's right. That's right. So then I thought, okay, why The Rock and Taker? Because they never faced each other at Mania. That too. They never stepped in the ring at a Mania. And it's also, too, like, he kind of foreshadowed it. If we saw on night yeah. one, night one, he did the rock bottom. The second rock bottom he did, or the people's elbow, the second time around. He did the ticker thing. He did the crossroad. We all said it, too. As soon as he did it, we're like, oh, this guy is trying to copy Undertaker? Yeah. Like, what? So, so that's, yeah, that yeah. foreshadowed it a little bit there. Yeah. yeah. He was just probably calling Taker, like, I am the boss now. Like, this is me. Yeah. Like, this is my yard. And yeah, I think that's sense. him telling the rock, hey, you know, I no, can't. It's not. No, it's not. It's still my yard. <laughs> and chokes the crap out of him. That too. So, yeah, I think uh, this does land in top five for me. I, I've seen so many WrestleMania events where I walked out happy. Some of them, of course, I walked out like, ah, I can't believe I watched that. And this year, everything that happened from the Man. beginning of that match all the way to the end, like you could say from entrance yeah. to finale to celebration. Yeah. I was happy with the whole outcome. Big time. And I really, I, I think at this point, too, you really have to say, out of the top five main events in the last five years, this definitely is oh, definitely way better one. Than- and, I mean, one, one of those within those five years, yes, it has to deal with the COVID time frame, of course, COVID WrestleMania. But remember, if I'm mistaken, we had The Undertaker's last match. AJ Styles against Taker, Bungard. Which was a good one, too. So at that point, you have to put that maybe number two, maybe number three, depending on what you um, count in last year's yeah, main event. You would have to count from 36 to 40, or even 35 to 40. 35 being uh, Brock against Roman Reigns, I believe. I bu- yeah. Oh, no, 35 was a women's uh, championship match. Oh, that's right, the first main event one. Yep. Yeah. So that was 35, 36. Mm-hmm. You had Taker and AJ. Mm-hmm. And you had Bra- uh, Brock versus Drew McIntyre. Yep. Uh, 37, you had uh, Bianca versus Sasha, I think. Uh, um, 37? Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I believe so. And, and then, then Bianca won. I was really I, then, I hated uh, that one. And then that same year, you had Edge, Daniel Bryan against yeah, Roman Reigns. That's correct. Yep. Then 38, you had uh, freaking Stone Cold. Against Kevin Owens. That's right. And you had Brock against Roman again. Yep. And then 39, you had uh, the Cody, the Cody yep. one. And you had the tag team, uh, Kevin Owens oh and Sami Zayn versus yes. the Uso. Even that was good. So, yeah, you you had yeah. some really good ones in the last five years for sure. Last yeah. five years, there were some good WrestleMania, not you know, main eventers and really did a really good job with it. But I, you would have to say this was the number one in the last five years. Yeah, I would have to go. This one would definitely be number one. It, it like just the way it drove your emotions, kind of like how Thirty Nine did. Definitely. Uh, with Night One's Thirty Nine of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, where mm-hmm. everybody was behind Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. But sadly, the outcome of Night Two ruined what Night One was. Agreed. But Agreed. it's funny because night one of this pay-per-view, everybody was like, okay, we knew you were going to lose. <laughs> we're cool with it. Yeah. You had a hell of a match. That's true. But we wanted to see what happens at Blood Rain Rules. And, and even at that, too, we got, like, the craziest thing between both nights, it's really, we were really, going into it, it was really questionable as to what they really wanted to do. Yeah. Like, the, the, the big picture of things, we were really kind of questioning, like, okay, they can go with The Rock winning, uh, what's it called, and at that too, Roman taking back the title run, in a sense, and run it back, because it's like, it's such a great title run. It was really great. It's been great. And with Rock coming back in, the how much heat, but also to how much entertainment he brought to this run was so good that it's like, do you really want it to end? 
Yeah. And it's really well hard. Like, can it? Like, he can still do it and come back here and there. And it's, but it's like, damn. So going into it, you had, you did have some of your expectations, but no lie, it could have gone the other way. And yet we still would have been fine with it. That, to be honest, we still would have been fine with it. Yes, everyone really wanted to see Cody win his story. But even if he did lose, it's like. There would have to be a reason why. Yeah, I big think- time. Like, in my mind, I was like, if Cody was to lose that night, <clears throat> it had to be because of Seth Rollins. Yeah. Yep. I was thinking, like, out of everybody in the world, everybody was thinking, okay, The Rock's a bad guy, so, yep. of course, The Rock's not going to cost Cody the match. Right. But Seth Rollins could have cost Cody, and people would have been mad. Yeah. But it would have been like, okay, why did that happen? Let's watch Money and Rana. That's right. But I think, like, even uh, with, like, the end of it, People were just so invested in watching Cody yes. finally get his like his story finished. Exactly, it. which was a big thing. And I think, you know, with him winning it really just oh man, it that really was so emotional. So and emotional. So yeah, that's pretty much what I got so far for yeah. a WrestleMania recap for the yeah. moment, you know, reject recap. That's right. So now let's go to another topic. <laughs> that's why. Uh I saw a trailer. Uh-huh. You saw the trailer. That's right. We got to talk about it because we are DC fans. <laughs> WrestleTude is about not That's just right. wrestling. It's yes. a fan's aspect of everything, a wrestling fan's aspect of life. Yeah. Oh, well, we're, before we get to that topic, before we get to that topic real quick, <laughs> actually. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. i pull you back just a tad no, no, bit. Go ahead. Go ahead. I like that. Talk, talk what you got to talk But what really was awesome when hit the cap the cap to night, night two was Samantha, the announcer. I was about to bring that up, but... We'll say that later? Yeah. Sounds good to me. That's a good topic I know, I know we're about to talk about that. Yeah, that but was, that was great. That I was, was trying questions. to hold on to that because okay, I know good. we're going to use that on the, Next the, one? the main event. Okay, sounds okay? good to me. <laughs> so, ladies okay, and gentlemen. Go ahead. go ahead. Us being fans. Yes. We saw the trailer. That's right. Recently came out. Yeah, today. And, right? and, and yesterday. Oh, was yesterday? Yeah. Oh, damn. I'm late then. I thought Joker, it was today. Uh... Damn, I can't pronounce the word. I can't. Even, I don't know the freaking book. That just say like Joker Two, man. Part Two, yeah, Joker Two, <laughs> which is called something for Madness or or Man uh, Madness Two or something. Like that. In their French, it's in French yeah, or something it's in like French. that. Right? So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, Not forgive French. me if I can't re- you know I can't say French and I can't even think of the name of well, it. Pepe Le Pew, yeah. Count them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, man, that trailer it started making me think because one, Lady Gaga is now. Your new Harley Quinn live action. That's correct. Uh, this makes her the second uh, Harley Quinn in live action movie. Yes. So, in your opinion, from what you saw, what do you think of that trailer? What do you think of Lady Gaga? Well, I, I mean, as Lady Gaga, it, Lady Gaga in general as the actress, I kind of, you know, I wasn't mad at her, the choice of her being cast as a Harley Quinn for this type of verse, this type yeah. of, you know, movie verse in a sense for this, for this character of Joker. It fits in with what they can do with her. And the only thing where I was just questioning, and I know we meant, we talked about that before, was the style of the movie, how they were saying it's going to be more of a musical. Like, I, in my mind, I'm like, uh, I don't know You're if thinking this, about dance moves and all it, that. It, you know, you get, like, I've seen The Greatest Showman, uh, you know, with all that with Hugh Jackman. And it's like, that was a great, like, wasn't my preference. And I really was, you know, uh, I think at that time, my sister wanted to see it. Um, we went to go see it in the theaters and I was very surprised at it. So not bad. But the fact that they're making a Joker like that kind of, you know, you a little bit, you know, they yeah. throw me off. But I'm like, and then you mentioned something before was like, what if they do it? It's in their dream. Like, what if it, they're hallucinating this type of stuff? And I'm like, holy shit. I didn't never think about that. No. And by doing that, it makes sense. And to this trailer, to be it honest, it looks like it. It, it does. Right? There's so many different scenes that you notice of them dancing and fighting and all these kinds of moves. It looks like they're fucking dreaming about this. Like, and I don't think it's Arthur's dream this time. Right. I think it could be hers. Yeah. That, oh my God. The whole time. I was yes. thinking, I'm like, this is Harley Quinn's yes. dream. Like, because one, Okay, she's supposed to be a doctor, but she's not a doctor in this movie. That's, she's actually she's a, a patient. Inmate. Yeah. Yes. So what if this whole time, because she also dreams, you know. Or what if she that, is a doctor, right? What if she is a doctor? Who's having that type of, like. Breakdown. Talks. Yeah, that yeah, breakdown. She gets a break. She has a breakdown. And then, then she becomes and a patient. And she's walked through this guy. Like, everything that he's been through, she's yeah. walking through his apartment and everything. Uh-huh. That's why she remembers that whole gun thing. Like, yep. she. She did the mimicking of the gun shooting herself. Oh my god! In front of Arthur, and I'm like, 
I don't think Arthur went back there. Like, I feel like both of these people, he's in Arkham and she's the doctor talking to him. Yeah. And now she's mimicking everything. Yeah. So I feel like this whole time now you're in her mind. Yes. And not his. Like, this time he's part of the movie. Right. But it's more of her telling her story of the story following Which is why it's a musical type of thing at times. Because Harley probably has, in some aspects, Harley Quinn has sung a lot in the cartoons. That's correct. uh, So, and Joker, of course, in uh, Arkham Knight has sung. Yep. And Joaquin Phoenix in movies have sung, and we, of course, know Lady Gaga sings. That's agreed. And from what I heard, it's not a musical as in dance numbers here and there. No. Right. It's actually, there's parts where they're going to, for like a freeze frame and sing. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay, cool. So we're going to hear like several songs uh-huh. that's going to add into the movie. And I, I'm not going to lie, it, like for a while, I like I always do, when, when movie goers, and directors how they have their own interpretation to a movie when you hear it at first it you're very skeptical <coughs> right you're very yeah. questionable as what's gonna happen so you're like all right let me at least see the first trailer or the teaser trailer in a sense and when they drop it there then it's like ah now i see where your idea is trying to head into now i see mm-hmm. where the direction that you're trying to go in and then at that point for me particularly and that's how i evaluate movies is it doesn't make sense, especially particularly to the especially teaser. when you watch it, man. Exactly. Like, they didn't live up to the trailer. One thing I like about it, though, the trailer doesn't show you much. But nope. I mean, we argued about that a lot of times. Where yep. We're like, oh, DC movie. Hey, look, it's Doomsday. And we're like, cool, yeah. Tell us that Superman's going to fucking die in right. your fucking movie. Yeah, exactly. And the first teaser trailer. Like, yeah. you just gave it away. You just gave it away. Let's go pay whoever wants to to go watch Superman die. Exactly. When you could have held back on that shit. Exactly. Just show us Bruce Wayne. That shows what Batman's going to look like. Right. That's another thing. Like, you went all balls and said, here's what Batman's going to look like. You this is Batman for you, you know? You could even kept Wonder Woman as a fucking yeah. surprise. You didn't need to show her in the trailers. No. And make it a Trinity movie. Like, and- all you had to do was just show us Batman versus Superman as to what we all thought. Yes, you probably we would have got pictures of Wonder Woman on the scene and all that kind of stuff. Because then we could be thinking, oh, maybe it's just a you know he's watching videos. Or just saw her walking around, you yeah. Know? But not as Wonder Woman, but exactly. Diana. But and it's they like could, they could they could have said it in the trailer. Oh, here's uh, you know Princess Diana, yes. Sir Mascara. That's right. Then it would have been like, oh, cool. Just a little Wonder newsletter Woman. or a new like a skit in the news yeah. scene or whatever case it be. So it's not really important. But when you show everything already... All at once, man. You that's show why the ch- you made that much money. You didn't make billions like you should have because you already gave us the whole film. Hey, fucking right. It's like, Everybody. who was in charge of the freaking... like who, what, what do they call those people? That the are Table the, of Idiots? That too. Uh, table yeah. of freaking idiots. But those are... like Those are... Uh, uh, the executive producers? Yeah. Not, no, 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 no. I'm talking about... Uh, uh, mar- marketing. Marketing. There, there you go. go. Those people that were in charge of the marketing well, plan at that time, Stanley, you dropped a fucking ball. It's not marketing's fault. Apparently, the, the table of idiots, what they call the executive idiots, oh, God. they wanted people to know that this is what's happening in the movie. They wanted, they pushed themselves in there. Idiots. That's why, Idiot. like, every time they've done these <laughs> movies, it's like, okay, now here's them against Dark Side, but we didn't see what's going to happen with Dark Side. Yeah. Like, yes, we got glimpses of uh, what's going to happen. Mm hmm. But look at the fact that over here, you got the whole film right before it came out. That's right. And so everyone's like, why am I going to watch it now? Right. You already told me it was going to happen. I'll just wait for it to come out on DVD and watch Pretty it. Pretty much. Now. And sure enough, everyone did. Uh, but that's the same thing with, with Joker 2. Like, it's you're, you're on the ball. You're on the right track when we're talking about how they didn't release much. No. And when you don't release much and you only give us little spits of scenes here and there, it's like, well, damn. Like, you try to put the picture together, but, but you can't, can't because you don't know what order it's going to be in. No. Like, all of this could happen in the beginning. And then you get to think, like, I know for a fact there's going to be some scenes that are actually happening in real life. But most of the scenes that you've seen, man, they're in a dream. So whose fucking dream is it? Is it hers? And that's the problem. Or maybe it is. Let's hope that the, this movie doesn't, like, let's hope the next trailer doesn't say. Oh, my God, please don't. Yeah, it doesn't spoil <laughs> more, like, if, Harley please. being interviewed. Like, please, it should guys. Be like, Harley not being interviewed at all. Right. And just Harley living, like, you see more Joker than her. Right. 
Like, make us follow him in yep. the trailer. Yep. But don't spoil nothing. Please don't. Because we want to watch this movie because yes. it already caught our attention. Little is more, everybody. Yeah. Remember that. Especially, especially with movies. Little is more. Because you give us that much a little bit, we're going to be fucking intrigued. Like, look what they did to Godzilla and Kong, man. The movie just yeah. recently came out. Great movie. Like, they gave us a lot of somewhat fighting scenes, but you didn't see Shimu in that one. Those who have seen it. You didn't really see freaking, sc- like, Skull, the K- Scroll King or whatever, the Scar King. You really see him that much. You saw him in the toys, but you didn't really see him in live yeah, action the movie, yeah. until you saw it. And then when you saw it, you're like, fuck, that's freaking cool. Yeah. So, so that's, that's what you need. You need yes. that type of, like, feeling of, finally, I want to go watch the movie. Don't yep. spoil it for me. It's yeah. like Ghostbusters. They talked about the villain. Facts. You didn't see him until nope. the movie came out. Exactly. So yes. that's why I'm like, little fucking more, guys. Yeah. We, when did we get, like, who, like whose idea was it that we're, to give all the ideas and sit there and say, oh, this is a great idea? People who just didn't know what the hell they're doing. That's why I call it the table of idiots because, man, there's people who think, oh, well, they already want to know. Show them fucking, show them Doomsday. They're going to. Might they're gonna, as well. We're yeah. in social media stage. They're going to see it anyways. No, 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 no. It's still like, because for us fans, if they, even if they do release it on social media prior to, we can still sit there and say, is it real? Yeah. Is it not just Look made at up? the fact that they didn't show much for Avengers. Yep. And Game or none of that. Or even Spider Man. Or even Spider Man. They try to hide the exactly. fact that. Exactly. You still saw the little lizard getting punched by thin air, you know? So you were thinking probably that, man. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you had those little snippets, and it's like, could it be? Could it not be? Like, you're still wondering. Who's the one punching him? Exactly. Like, you didn't even want to know that. Like, you see him getting kicked by some invisible beam, but First. you don't know. If it's Andrew was. Garfield or if it's Tobey Maguire. Or if it's neither or. What if it's neither another or. character? Yeah. So it's like, damn. Probably a black cat joining the Oh, my fight. God, yes. And when we went to we'll watch it, who didn't go, oh, fuck? Yeah. And then, oh, fuck again when both of the, when the other ones showed up. Exactly. Like, damn, this is freaking awesome. And that's what you want. As yes. a fan, you want that, oh, fuck moment. Like yes, the holy right. shit in the wrestling thing, you yes. know? Yes. You want Farouk to come out there and be like, Damn. Damn! Yeah. <laughs> like, after Spider Man just kicked the guy, they just look at, you know, Farouk just appears, looks at them, and they're looking at the Farouk, like, what the, uh, what's he doing here? <laughs> Damn! <laughs> it's, it, it, long right, it just, it makes, it makes it make grace for TV. And at this point, what we've seen with the trailer, mm-hmm. I am not, I am actually, I'm more on hi, on the hype train to go see the movie. I was, too. I definitely was on the sideline and saying, I, 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 I like, don't know how it's going to be, man. Because when I first saw it, I'm like, one, I thought of it right away. I'm like, no, it, it's even though it's going to be a musical, there's something yeah. wrong with that. I'm like, you just, you don't make a movie like that with Lady Gaga. And you don't make that drastic change. Yeah. So it's like, oh my god, okay. And even though, of course, they're back to making it a romantic movie like they did with uh, Harley and Ark and um, Jared Leto, Jared Leto, Leto. Put, right? But this one, I don't think it's like the romantic, uh, fake, you know, the romantic thing that they try to do there because right. Joker never cared about Harley. Not Joker, in that sense. Like he, yeah. like he liked her. Yeah, but he, you could tell he was an asshole. He was even a cartoon. Her, and you yes. know why he was using her? Because Joker tries to be the opposite of Batman. That's correct. And think of it this way. Batman and Night and Robin, they separated and Robin became Nightwing. That's right. Joker's broken up with Harley so many times mm-hmm. for him to bring her back. Yeah. So it's kind of like Joker keeps trying to mimic everything that Batman's done. Yeah, it's a tat. That's correct. And he has a partner, but he has a girl. Instead. Yeah. Yep. And just someone that loves him kind of like a, uh, in a different relationship than what Batman has with Robin. Right. Robin... It's like a son to Batman. Correct. A father figure. And it, with Harley, it's like, you know, with Harley at times even in the series, like you did see that he became the jealous type. Yeah. In a sense, like he was like, oh, no more talk, talk to her, but me type of deal. And within the cartoon, so you still had that element. And it's and, and with, with the Jared Leto side of things, he was he took it to another level. Like, don't talk to my girl, you dead type of deal. Yeah. So it's like in this one, it's it's more or less of like there there's some intrigueness with each other. There is some but type of you, you don't can know if it's what it in is in her mind exactly. So that's why I'm like I don't I don't know if she's just imagining this whole shit going down right, just like how he did. Because in in the first movie, he was you know the character that portrayed Domino in Deadpool uh, two. She was more she was kind of a fantasy to him, and 
it still didn't matter to him. No. So it's like in this one, it, he could have some type of intrigue, like infatuation with her, but it really doesn't mean anything. Probably he's in this. Probably he's in Arkham this whole time. I was just dreaming the whole shit up. Yeah, man. Oh, man this ridiculous. This is crazy. I don't yeah. know, man. It's we good. Gotta, we got to watch. That's the thing. We're going to have to go watch this yeah, movie because good, we don't know what's going on. Hell no. Hopefully, DC, thanks to James Gunn probably being in charge of this. Thank you, Jesus. DC, don't go fucking this up. Yes, please. Little more. Little is best. Keep yes. it simple, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> for everybody. Uh, yeah, that's fucking good. Hell yeah. So, yeah. Now, I agree with you. I think it's time for the main event. Uh-huh. All yes. right. Give night time, one, man. night two. We've been following this wrestler. The many came back. Yep. It was crazy because he was in a different company. Yeah. And he left. He left yeah. because of the shitty treatment he had. Facts. Being a Rhodes, you hope that he would get treated correctly. You know, Facts. being uh, Dusty's kid, like CM Punk said. Facts. But then fucking Cody Rhodes leaves because he's tired of it. Facts. He becomes American Nightmare. He becomes. He's not. He's still at a big level. Okay. Facts. It's not until he comes back to WWE where that fucking name just skyrocketed again. That's facts even more. Yeah. And you're just looking at it like, oh, shit, Cody Rhodes is back and yep. face off against Seth Rollins. Mm -hmm. Then he goes into Hell in a Cell. Correct. Fucking tore peck and everything and still puts on one fucking match yep. with Seth Rollins. Yep. And you're, in your mind, you're like, this is who we want as world champion. Yep. This is my champion right here. Facts. And it doesn't happen. Nope. And you're, now you're invested. Mm -hmm. And finally, WrestleMania 40 comes in. Mm -hmm. Finally, the Royal Rumble happened. Yep. Well, you know, CM Punk and Cody, where Cody eliminates them. Yep. And even though we want, some people wanted Punk, we're still happy to see Cody do it. Yep. And then The Rock comes in. And still, people want Cody. And finally, it happened, dude. We finally got Cody to get his flowers, to win the Facts. fucking championship. Hell yeah. What a WrestleMania moment. That's correct. So, bringing it to you, how is it that we are, you know, how does it feel seeing Cody win? Tell me about your, uh, like, your emotions, your reaction to the fucking match. Man, it was, it was, it was great to even see. It, it was, it's crazy because it's like, you, you really don't realize how much you're invested into the product a lot of times. You kind of like... You know, as as a fan of I am with wrestling, it's you know there's hit and misses to storylines where I'm intrigued by it, I'm entertained by it, I'm yeah. invested into the journey that goes in with the wrestler that goes uh, that goes with it. You know, and especially with Cody Rhodes' story, it's like you knew he got the shit stick when you gave him Stardust, and you knew by doing all that, like he even though he hated the character, he did he did really well with trying to make it entertaining. And at some point, he became a fan favorite too with that character. Yes. But it's like, is that who you really want to be for the rest of your career? No. Knowing that Stardust? Like, because no. Because they're stuck in the same gimmick that your brother was stuck in. It's exactly. Like, sadly, it's like Vince McMahon shoving it to you saying, and okay, we, you know, I try not to mention his name for what he's done, but Correct. Vince McMahon is a person that just a shitty person in real life. And mm -hmm. it's good to tell people who this person was. Yeah. This man, for some reason, hated Dusty Rhodes. Uh, yeah. I can't figure out what it was. And then he treated Dustin uh -huh. bad, and Dustin made a good gimmick out of him, became Goldust. He gave him he gave him a character to be such a sexual, but let's put, let's be honest. At that yeah. time, being gay wasn't really good in no, a sense. It, it wasn't was like a bisexual. It wasn't. It, he was married. Right. It wasn't acceptable. No. Right. And it was really more used as like to poke fun at to kind of be be seen as uh, on the bottom of the totem pole in a yeah, sense like a lower level person yeah not life. taken serious or any no. in that matter so by hit by gold us by dustin taking that character and running with it and making so entertainment and making good tv like the storyline he had with roddy piper was freaking phenomenal yeah. the storyline he had with freaking austin storyline he had with undertaker and then the tag team with booker oh King. my god lit it up so he yeah. became entertaining in that manner so props Fucking props and flowers to him for doing such a and, great with a career. And that's a testament to Dusty Rhodes himself because yes. Dusty, outside of WWE, he didn't have that fucking polka dot thing on. Facts. He had cowboy boots, jeans. He was an American. He was American. He was at the South. Yeah. Could be, I don't know if he was from Texas or Louisiana. Dallas, I think. 
Or Dal- yeah. So I think he's from Texas. You're from Texas? Yeah. yeah. Could be. So, I'm like, he has that Texas look, no lie. Yeah. Cowboy boots, hat, jeans, buckle. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's the cowboy look in Texas. So it's like, you had that Americanness in you, and that, out- in a sense, outlaw, right? It's talking about outlaw yeah. title. So it's like, you had that outlaw in him, and it's like, he. that's what drove people to love what he did and why people were such a fan of him. And for Vince, it's like, you know, uh, Vince, you could tell he's a northerner in a sense. He's not really a southerner to kind of no, accept. No, because he was from, uh, damn, where's he from? Connecticut, yeah, I believe. So, so it's like, you know, upper class in a sense. And um, funny mm, thing, he actually, buddy. I think he spent time in Illinois too. Uh, and it's weird. It's yeah. just weird. So it's for him to have beef, you can see it. Because South and North wasn't really all hot, hot hype, you know what I mean? They weren't really talking in that manner. But, but you could tell Dustin didn't take, Dustin never took shit. No. If he, it was something he didn't like, he was very vocal about it. And knowing Vince, we all, we've come to find out that he was the type of person where don't talk too much shit to me or I'm going to put you down. Or yeah. I'm going to find ways to make you look stupid. And sure enough, we've kind of seen that over the years. And the weird part is, I feel like Vince has always had a thing against heavy set people yeah uh kevin owens he kept kevin owens down for a long time correct bray wyatt he was a little heavy set not right. that bad or anything correct. but he was heavy set he never gave bray wyatt a chance even when bray wyatt was out selling everybody oh my god yes so now you saw that now you saw that way back with dusty Rhodes. yes it's like here's dusty charisma like a motherfucker he could Facts. talk he could throw promos mm. to this day not that many people could do what he does outshine that hard times promo that he had. oh my god yes so now you're looking at that and this guy puts him in a polka dot onesie and Shit. says go out there and you know just shake your butt and have a good time yeah well, I don't you're know not what, gonna be nothing what uh, yeah like what like what was he trying to be what was he trying to be like a freaking rap or something like that like uh more like a 70s uh, 80s, like, disco. Oh, God. So. Yeah, no. No, not at and all. And that's why it's like, okay, you know, that's what Vince McMahon envisioned. And it's like, no, you know, Sally, a brilliant mind has a shitty mind at the same time. Exactly. He had great thoughts, but, like, WrestleMania, you know, he actually, even though he came up with the idea, it was somebody else who came up with the name. Yeah, exactly. And the yes. arena and all that. I mean, yep. he might have thought of like everything that goes around it, mm-hmm. but other people who input it into it that made it WrestleMania. I mean, let's put it honest. That this is how we've we've come to notice that this has always been his niche, where he surrounded himself with great team and the great people to come up with ideas, and from there he took little ideas here and there, and either he ran with it or he kind of tweaked it to his liking in a yeah. sense. So this is why that whole Attitude Era stage was, it had a lot of, you could tell and feel it had a lot of his input, but it also had a lot of Vince Russo stuff in there. Uh, Jim Ross. And, and, and Jim Ross as well, too. So you yeah. had, like, you, you, at that time, you had a good team around you during that era. The era started going shitty when Vince Russo came in. Uh-huh. They started talking about how when Vince Russo came in is when the era was, like, looking bad. Mm-hmm. When they fired him is when the fucking thing came up because back. Jim Brown started taking over. And then freaking goes over to Dusty. Now. But, yeah, yeah, back back to the whole Dusty stuff. Well, so now Dusty, you know, he didn't get his. He had to, like, show off and do this whole thing. Yeah. And it never killed him. It never hurt his name. Like, nope. he already knew who Dusty Rose was yep. way from Mid-South and all Facts. that. Facts. And then his son came from also a world champion mm-hmm. from a different company, a uh, mm-hmm. NWA champion, I believe. Yep. He goes around, you know, he comes over here, they go dust him. Mm-hmm. And now young Cody Rhodes comes into the company. Same shit. They're like, Vince had something against the Rhodes name where he just kept tossing trash at them. It really was because you had a good, you had a good run where it was him, DiBiase Jr., and Randy Orton, the yeah. young, in a sense, the legacy. That, the legacy, in a sense, you had that going forward, and it's like you ended. In my opinion, they ended it too quickly. Yeah. So at this point, that's why you went it quickly. Then you look at, oh, was it because they were gaining heat? They were gaining momentum. Mm-hmm. They could have been the, in a sense, the Shield before the Shield, and how hyped they could have been. Or the new evolution just put both on each exactly. One. So it's like, man, it could have even done better, but he separated there too quickly. And it's like, man, you you kind of get to see that stuff. And then from going from Cody going from that to going to Stardust, and then from there saying, you know what, I'm betting on myself. I'm leaving this company. I'm gonna go out to the indie, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my best to make this shit work. And sure enough, he went out there. He did his work. He got himself that American Nightmare tattoo. 
he kind of he's paying homage to his dad in a sense, but taking it to what he prefers to be himself, going to AEW in a sense, in little ways or not attacking WWE at the same time. Like you see where I'm at, I'm 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 this way because I said I'm changing myself. I said fuck you guys to what you guys try to make me be. I'm gonna be myself. I'm being this character that I love, and I'm gonna make I'm gonna make business out of it. And sure enough, became a fan favorite in AEW. Main Pretty one of the much. main reasons why people tune in to watch AEW his, at the beginning stage. His brilliance. Exactly. Cody Rhodes is the reason why, like, you could tell when he was there, mm-hmm. AEW's cards were uh, fantastic to watch. Yeah. Everything was great to watch. Yep. He left, and all of a sudden, that shit just started dropping down. Yes. I mean, a lot of people might disagree with me, but tell me, <clears throat> how many times can you tell me that AEW has outshined WWE recently? Not, Other than Steam's final match. And that's another thing, too. Besides that part, no, to my opinion, nothing. I nothing. mean, like, even at that, MJF did some shoots and stuff. He did really well. And that, that was a character, I think, at that point where you knew AEW should be paying attention to the most. Give him the reins. Like, yes, Cody left. Who, who, who do you have next? Bro, you have MJF right there. He's bread and butter. Stop bringing in people from WWE and saying, start come, building them up. Right, start building them up. Create within talent is what we saw in WCW. Once you start paying to the inbred talent, it's gonna make business. And but if you bring part, outside stuff, it's not always gonna work. Yeah, and the sad part is the wrestlers that you brought in from the D were the ones we wanted you to see you build up to championship. That's right. Miro, aka Rusev, mm-hmm. should have been world champion in AEW. Facts. Uh what's the name? Cesaro, Cesaro. should have been something big. And they all end up in the same position they were at the factions. other company. Exactly. Factions. Factions, mid-card, mid-card, forgotten. Yes, not done on the mic, not done properly. And it's like, golly, bro, you guys you guys and, did take the money. It's it, And that's why I said it's like WCW all over again in the sense of where. Just take the money and. We're richer, we're richer owners in a sense. Yeah. And at this point, just, just, I guess, going out there and just whatever. And Cody Rhodes, because he wasn't happy with how things were about to play out. Right, like, I got to leave. Right, I got to head out before I get going. So, by him doing that, and then him making that freaking WrestleMania, you know, three years ago when he first made a comeback with WrestleMania, my God, that was the biggest pop that crowd I've heard in a long time. Before that, the big the big pop was Jeff Hardy, the Hardy Boys returning to. Oh yeah, WWE. that was. But at that point, that was the next biggest pop that I've heard, and at man, the freaking phenomenal. And then since then. It has been his story since he started. I'm going to win the title for my dad. I'm going out there. I'm going to do it. And then you give him WrestleMania, last year's WrestleMania, and he loses. So now we're thinking to ourselves, holy shit, this is another Vince McMahon. He's mm-hmm. going to bury him again. Like We all talk shit about Vince McMahon. Oh, my it's God. Like, we, we, right away, we said it. Yep. We know who did night one. We yes. know who did night two. Exactly. So by doing that, it's like, there you go again, Vince. Like, you are shooting down talent. You're showing that in front of people. You are shitting on the people that are coming in from another company to, you know, who did good. And then come here and then make them lose and make them still look like you're not all that great guy. You know what I mean? Like, it, like to, in his mind, it's it's what's best for business or whatever. Like, no, yeah, that's no. not the case, buddy. It's not. And for us, it's like... We want that fairy tale ending mm-hmm. because, believe it or not, I'm going to say it, and this is true. Mm-hmm. A lot of people watch wrestling because it's kind of like people who watch their novellas, you know? Yeah. So there's people who watch their novellas. There's people who watch their shows. They want that ending to be, you know, uh, where the couple finally get together. Yeah. And here is like where you want the guy who's been fighting hard to get a championship yep. to finally get that belt. Yeah. And I understand, you know, Vince is like, well, no, not right now. You know, it's not going to happen now. But you said that at 37. Yep. You said it at 38. Yep. And now you said it at 39. It's yep. like, dude, we're tired of your shit. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, we weren't, we're, we're not here trying to see you build these wrestlers for and, years and get them like and give a wrestler all these accomplished years of records where he oh now he's been world champion for such a long time got it it's cool that he did it i ain't gonna lie it's cool that roman because of like everything he's going through facts it's cool that he has that type of recognition yeah, big time it, he was better he was made for it and i yeah. think 
you know, we at that point we've said it numerous of years that if he given Paul Heyman, that boy's mm-hmm. career is gonna skyrocket. And sure enough, they actually listen to us for a change. Pretty much. And at this point, same thing with Cody. It's like, give him the reins, man. Give him yeah, the title belt. He's leave. he's he's definitely the it guy to lead you to the new future. He went out there, changed his image. He knows what people want in wrestling. He puts on a hell of a show in the wrestling ring. And at that, too, it's like you can make him a bad guy eventually. Yeah. He could do a heel run in, in, uh, in a sense. But right now, currently, he's your biggest face to go moving forward. He's like your new John Cena, your new Hogan, your new yeah. Bret Hart. He's like the face of the company now. At this point, it's good to have him there because, yeah. man, coming from Dusty, knowing that it's a family-bred type of wrestling love, that is that is. And you can tell how passionate he is about Big it. Time. It's not... Like when he won the belt, you saw yes. there's a lot of wrestlers in history yep. who have won the belt, not just at Mania, but outside of Mania. Yeah. And you see the passion when they won it. Like Shawn Michaels, when he won yep. his first world title, yep. dropped to the knees, Meets up to that banged point. on the floor, yeah. cried, grabbed the belt, kissed it. Vax. He loved it. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Hardy, when he won it, yeah. fucking tosses the chair to the floor, yeah. starts crying. He's like, dude, I finally got my belt. Yeah. Eddie Guerrero wins his belt, shimmies. Rolls out of the ring and right away gets into the channel family and starts celebrating with everybody in the crowd. That's right. So that's like you saw it with Cody now where he wins the belt, fucking pounds on the floor. Mm -hmm. You start seeing the tears coming out of his eyes. People come out. Yep, people coming out. People who are crying because he won it. Yeah. Seth Rollins was at ringside crying. And now I'll let you say about the ring announcer. (laughs) Samantha, man. People are giving her flack, bro. Like, literally, when she had to announce the victor- the victory winner, be it being Cody, you hear her voice crackle. You hear her passion. You hear, you, you hear it. And then when you see, then uh, WWE releases the videos into what, what her face and stuff, it's like, damn, like, bro, like, that's the type of passion that we look for. People who are in the industry are doing these little side jobs on the side are like, are you there just for the show or are you there because you love the business? And by her doing that, it's like that is only passion can do that. A and lot by of her the company. Yes. And by her doing that, that's fucking passion. But these sons of bitches out here that are trying to dog her for crying and being all well, extra emotional. People are saying that she she knew the outcome and I don't think she did. But. I, I think that's why a lot of people are like, oh, she's overreacting about the No, blah, blah. no, this is my uh, thing, you guys. Yeah. Guys, listen up. Not everybody is in the room when it comes to decisions that are being made, man. People, other, other wrestlers and other entertainers, other people that work within the company are not in that room. And I'm about to piss off a lot of, a lot of people. I'm going to piss off a whole bunch of you off right now what I'm about to say. Mm-hmm. Y'all might end up unfollowing us because of it. <laughs> Jim Ross said, a lot of times he said, when it came to the outcome of any match, I didn't want to know the outcome. Yeah. I wanted to wait until the match was over for me to know who was going to win. Exactly. Jim Ross waited until the end, and that's why he had such a... Great announcement to from it. From Jim Ross. Same thing with Samantha Irving right here. She didn't know. Yep. You can see it in her face. She's crying way before the three count. She was right. already emotional. So here's Samantha Irving like crying, you know? Yep. And she gets up and you can tell she's not like she's not acting like here's your winner. Look out of your house. <laughs> no. She's actually trying to say it. You could tell that well, she's her trying voice cracks, man. Because she can't do it right there because of when she's crying. When you're crying, you're not gonna say it all like here's your winner, Cody Rose. Yes. No. Dude, when you're emotional. The emotion is going to get the shit out of you That's when you right. try to say something. Yes. And I, and I'm not going to lie, man. Just watching that, I've, I've said it before. I was, I'm, with her being a ring announcer, you could tell she enjoys. And the way WWE, you know, they like to highlight her. They, people can sit there and say, oh, she's just eye candy, whatever case it be. No. Not every single fucking time she's showing out her body or anything in that matter. Like, she's being respected. She's being respectable. And people are respecting the work that she's putting in for the company. Yeah, and at much. this time right now, it's like, fucking A, that's who you want. It reminds you of Lillian Garcia when she was on the mo- on the ropes. Howard and, Finkel. And Howard Finkel. Like, those that are really passionate about what they're doing in that career, what they're announcing, it's like, it draws you in. It helps with the product. So by her doing that, man, this is fucking awesome. It's like her 
her being excited is what we feel about being and excited. And not just her. If you listen to the commentary, oh which is God. funny because we couldn't hear it because we right. were celebrating like crazy. We were cheering up our heads. Yeah. And then we start listening to it. It's like, holy shit, they're up and about. Uh, yeah, I had to listen to, I rewatched the whole clip again at mm-hmm. home. I watched all the main event of Mania, the final and everything, and yeah. listening to like Michael Cole like announce the match. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize Michael Cole said when uh, he did a third crossroads in Pendulum, mm-hmm. he actually said, one, finish your story when it ended. <laughs> and then he goes, Cody oh, Rhodes. Nice. Damn it. Cody Rhodes finished the story. Yes. It's over. Like, Michael Cole yes. went off like crazy. Like, yeah. I never heard Michael Cole before. Like, yeah. Even at the point where he's like, for the first time ever, a uh, Rhodes can say he's WWE champion. Like, Correct. even that hit me. Like, yeah, yeah, it's true because Dusty couldn't say, Dusty couldn't say it. Right. But finally, Cody Rhodes could say it. Like, exactly. uh, Rhodes is the WWE champion. It's in the books now. Yeah, exactly. And it's awesome. Uh, I mean, yeah. by them being passionate like that, uh, it helps with the product, like I said before. But it's also, too, just tells you that, look, guys, the wrestling is a great entertaining business. It is, in my opinion, by far better than TV show watching, better than movie watching at times because this is can, this is an endless product. This is an endless storytelling because it, it can keep happening every single year and it's going to keep going and going. It may be the same wrestling or whatever, but, man, these stories that happen with that are going to be different. These in people that are inputting things are going to be different. The looks, the, the, the shine, the matches, the wrestling, like – it's gonna be different all the time. Who would have known that The Rock would become Triple H's boss? That's crazy. <laughs> and he's only gonna get bigger now because yeah. he's, uh, he's we're he being told he's buying more shares. Yeah, so. he's buying a lot more shares. Like, and not what, just nine million. Yeah, not just not just the WWE type of shares. TK- the TKO, oh, which is both of them combined. TKO. It's, my gosh! So that means he's gonna be Dana White's boss. Oh yeah. my God, that's gonna be crazy! I think he is Dana White's boss because he's, right uh, he's in the board, board? and Dana White's not. I think nope. Dana White's just a president. Yeah, he's just like uh, this is my company. I'm gonna charge this. Yeah. So it's oh my God, it's only gonna get better. This is gonna be a good year in entertainment business. And I we're think. just and the funny thing is, it's just starting. Yes, this, this, is, this like, is WrestleMania Day One. This is like for us wrestling year. fans. This is our new year. Yes, exactly. This is our new year. Like Happy New yes. Year, you know. Happy that. New Year's, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. That's how us wrestling fans see it, you know. It's like Big our time. Super Bowl, our New Year. Because now it's like, well, damn, who's going to be different day deb- debuts? Who's going to be at Royal Rumble now? Who who are they going to go out there trying to sign from other companies to come on board to be like, all right, bet this is what's going to happen. And they- we're waiting to see who's going to win the Rumble next year. Exactly. We want to see who's facing who. Like now we're at the point of thinking, is CM Punk going to finally finish his and go yes. on to the main event? Correct. Would it be Punk and Rhodes? Could be. That's yeah, a good story yeah. to head off. Mm-hmm. Okay. And because, especially with Punk said, you know, I'm not going to, I didn't wait 10 years just for me to lose to Dusty's kid, and then he loses. Yeah. And, like, that could be such a big thing between Cody and CM Punk. Yep. So, so much could happen now, man. Yeah. And I'm so happy of what I've seen. Like, yeah, on Sunday, dude, at the end of that match, I was just going crazy. I, yeah. And just Lost happy. emotions. You, yeah. Yeah. You guys, tune in, please. Look, go on you on YouTube. Go look up Reject Rundown. Look at uh, it's called Redemption um, or Deception or Deception, and it's a Reject Mania Night Two. You tune in towards like at two, the three hour mark, three hour and twenty some mark is when you get to see the the, the entrances, the the, the 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 appearances from other wrestlers okay, come in, all and that. all of our reactions to it. Man, it's just passion all around. Mm-hmm. It's fucking awesome. So yeah, that's that's, that's all I can say, man. Congratulations, yeah. Cody Rhodes. You Agreed. finally got it. Yep. Uh, happy to see you celebrate with your family, Dusty Rhodes. Yes. Happy to see that your boy finally got it, man. You yeah. finally got your championship with you. I agree with you. Rest in peace, Dusty. But man, this is that's a good mark on the history book. Yeah. Love it. All right. All right so uh, go ahead, tell your kid, do your thing, and then I'm gonna close it out. <laughs> well, signing off, man. It was great, great show, great show, great reject mania. Night one and night two was fantastic. Have the whole crowd there, but also too with with the old man, man here and having Russell too. At this point, it's freaking nice to have a recap. Recap of what we saw on WrestleMania 40. Just the freaking phenomenal nights. And um, those who are tuning in, man, please keep on coming. We got a lot more product coming on by. And it, we're only growing at this point right now. It's the passion that we go into the biz. And we just want to make this make this work, man. Great stuff. And with that, I just want to sign off, Rejects. Thank you all for tuning in. Y'all have a lovely night. Mm. Enjoy everything that you do in life. And just keep pushing hard. That's right. Bye.